finding out what the people want, what the people think, seeing what the conditions are, and uh, getting information from his home state to, uh, in order to be better prepared to do his job when he returns to Washington in September. That's what the recess is for. Now, I use Ted Cruz very specifically because, number one, I'm down here in this little speck of dust called Texas, and he's one of our two senators. These days, probably more famous than the senior senator, who's John Cornyn, who is up for re-election. And uh, given the alternatives, I highly, highly recommend, not endorsing, but I highly recommend if you live in Texas, you know, voting for John Cornyn. He's better than the alternative. Much better than the alternative. Anyway, back to Ted Cruz, because he is rather outspoken. He is has become rather renowned because he's he's put his face on a lot of things, made a name for himself. So he, that's why he serves as a good example because he's from a state and that. So he's uh, he should be going around and doing those things. And Ted Cruz is very much known for for doing just that during you know weekend breaks and uh, in past recesses. I'm sure he's going to spend some time with with Heidi and the kids. I think it's Heidi, right, Ted? Anyway. I'm sure he's going to spend some time doing, you know, with them, and I hope he does. You know, he, he's earned the time with his family, but he's also going to continue to be doing his job. Just because the uh, Senate's not in session doesn't mean he's not a senator and not still doing his job. His job just will not be sitting on the floor and and wanting to debate things, but it will be going around and and finding out what he can do. You know, getting doing that fact finding and talking with the people. So make sure that your uh, your representatives, your re your uh, congressmen, and your senators during this break are doing their job. Make sure they're not uh, taking a month long vacation. You know, they they get off uh, at midnight, and tomorrow they're hopping a flight to Mallorca for the month. That <laughs> if they're doing that, you you may want to seriously consider. If your primaries haven't come up yet, you might want to consider looking at somebody else in the primaries. Anywho, that's two big things. And you want another big thing that they need to be looking at. There, there's, a, there's a whole laundry list. But the federal transportation, the highways, federal highways bill, is still working and still needs to be passed. And a lot of that's allocation of funds to fix the streets that are already there to maintain them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's another one that's, you know, being bounced back and forth and argued and nobody's really come to any agreements on. Well, they have until midnight to pass that bill. So a lot of work. That's three major bills that need to be passed. By midnight, and that doesn't count any confirmation hearings. Um, you, you know, the Senate doesn't just confirmate congressional appointments; they also have to uh, confirm a, a flag officer um, appointments. We're talking about general officers and admirals and stuff like that. So they have those confirmations to do, and, and all kinds of other things, and all kinds of other business in there. And these three major pieces of legislation that they really need to get passed and get passed now um, if they're sensible now if they're chewed up bills like the 3.8 billion dollar sinkhole coming out of the Senate for the border that one probably should not get passed but the uh, the one that's 660 million in allocations a good chunk of which is actually just a reallocation of funds doesn't require any increase or not much of an increase let me restate that uh, not much of an increase in deficit spending because there is a slight small one that one needs to get passed 
So, uh, yeah, we've got that going on. Speaking of veterans, though, folks, because we were just talking about the veterans bill. We, uh, down here in this little speck of dust called Texas, we have a governor who is very pro-military and pro-veterans. And, uh, and given all the uh, things going on with the, the care of veterans, he's doing something about it. And one of the things he's doing, other than just supporting legislation that's been passed and executive orders, is uh, he's launched, well, take a listen. Hopefully this, this plays unlike the last clip. But take a listen to what he has to say. Our men and women in uniform have valiantly served and profoundly sacrificed for our nation. That's why Texas is expanding staffing at the Texas Veterans Hotline with experts trained to help veterans deal with the VA. Callers can learn what they qualify for, and in the most urgent cases, TVC experts will work directly with the VA to help veterans get the answers and care they need and deserve. Call the hotline at 1-800-252-VETS. Yeah, translation of what's coming out of Governor Perry there is kind of saying, hey, I know that the federal VA system is kind of chewed up right now, so uh, call 1-800-252-VETS. That's 1-800-252-8387. This is if you're a Texas resident, by the way, guys, or you're a military member who's from Texas. But 1-800-252-VETS. Go ahead and call that, and you're going to get the uh, the Texas level VA. And if uh, if the federal VA is giving you a runaround, or you're not sure even where to go to start with them because they're such a chewed up bureaucratic mess, call the Texas guys, call the Texas hotline, and they'll f do their best to fix it for you. Um, they'll go and beat up the VA on your behalf, um, and they'll do what they can from the Texas level veterans programs that, that are available in the meantime. So uh, that's what's coming out of Governor Perry. That's kind of the uh, state level fix to this bleeding massive, on it seems like it's on its last legs, ball of corruption called the, uh, called the v federal VA. And... Uh, uh, folks, if you've look, looked at any of the hearings, and I've done several articles, and some of them at BuzzPo, some of them are at Burner Brief, some of them dating back, you know, over the last couple of years on my own blog uh, at Mental Aikido there, talking about things messed up with the VA, and things were messed up long before Shinseki took over. They got a little bit better under the last couple of years under Bush, and then Shinseki comes in as the uh, Secretary of the VA, appointed, of course, by Obama. I mean, Obama. And uh, all of a sudden, they're much, much, much worse. And a lot of stuff is, was hidden, although some things were leaked out. And then eventually, it just all blew up in their faces because all the little things tied in with the, the big thing of, of veterans dying while waiting for health care. And uh, it, it really needs to be... Um, taken care of. And it's not just the health care. Like I said, it's the it's the GI Bill management. It's the VA home loan management. Um, it's the vocational rehab management. It's the entire bureaucracy. And I've I've talked to people who have worked within the VA or in some that currently still do, and. It's a bureaucratic mess. You have diehard union members that are, you know, higher in rank at the various VA facilities, and you have your newer members who, during the first you know year or two, aren't complete union members, and not completely uh, vetted within the system, and they they haven't gotten your tenure, so to speak. Well, you'll have this GS seven or eight decide that they don't want to do the paperwork assigned to their job and their union member 
So they'll go to somebody who's less qualified and lower in the GS scale and dump all the reports on their desk. Not even tell these GS2, GS3s that the paperwork's even there and that they need to do it. But they'll dump it over there like the day before it's due, knowing dang well it's not going to get done. And then when it's not done, they'll point their finger and say, I gave that to you to do, why didn't you do it? And that GS2, GS3 will get fired or written up or or take a uh, dock and pay. Meanwhile, the union member, GS6, GS7, still getting full pay and in many cases getting a bonus for not doing their job and trying to pass it over to somebody else who is incapable or doesn't have the authority to do the job. So, that's some more of the corruption in the VA there. And that's not everywhere, but it's in some offices. And that the scary thing is, if it's happening in one office, it's happening in too many. It should not be going on at all. The bureaucrats need to remember, they work for us. They work for us, the veterans, of which I am. They work for us, the citizens. Without the citizens, they don't have a job. They work for us. They are accountable to us. They are not above us. And public sector unions need to be illegal, period. SEIU needs to be no more. Just my two cents. They do more harm than good. Again, just my two cents. But uh, all kinds of interesting things coming out. Um, one of the things that, uh, oh, I was about to read uh, a quote from Perry, but it, you already heard it in his little clip. So, don't want to regurgitate in my voice what uh, what Rick already said in his. But, you know, this being a Thursday and this being the end of the week, we should be winding down looking for the happier things. And like I said, tomorrow, of course, is going to be Freedom Friday. We're, of course, going to cover what news we need to cover, but we're going to try to stay on the upside of things to lead you into the weekend tomorrow. That's our normal, our normal thing. Of course, on Mondays, we try to start the week off with as much happy news as we can, too. But, you know, we still have a uh, responsibility to kind of talk about the news that needs to be talked about. Um, so with that in mind, I do want to, uh, bring you to something to kind of end this show on a little bit of a higher note. Unfortunately, folks, I cannot, well, I could play the clip, but it's not going to do you a listener any good to just hear the clip. So do yourself a favor, go over to Buzzpo and look for... Let me get the exact title. Um, I want to say it's something along the lines of Alan Dershowitz spanks Mark Lamont Hill cues Paul Stanley. That sounds a little bit obscure for people who don't know who Paul Stanley is. It doesn't matter who the other guys are when you look at the headline. Although it's uh, it, it's interesting, um, you're wondering what the heck I mean. What is meant by cueing Paul Stanley? Paul Stanley is the lead singer of the band Kiss, and once upon a time, back in the '80s, Kiss did a song called "Tears Are Falling." So, go on over and look up Alan Dershowitz Spanks. Mark Lamont Hill. To give you the long and short of this, there was a having a panel discussion on CNN, and Alan Dershowitz was in favor of what uh, Israel is doing against Hamas to defend, you know, Israel against the uh, terrorist group Hamas, and uh, starts to bring up all kinds of facts and historical background data. And uh, then it comes towards the end of the panel discussion, and Mark Lamont Hill wasn't able to get a word in edgewise, so the uh, the moderator says, okay, go ahead, Mark, you, you, you've got your final comments, go ahead and, and talk. 
and Mark just kind of starts saying, uh, "Alan, you're 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 wrong. You're 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 saying things I don't agree with." Well, and then Dershowitz is very quickly responding, "It's a fact. Doesn't matter whether you agree with it or not. It's a fact." And that comes up with almost every line. It seems like it seems like that is coming out of Hill's mouth that he can't get his talking points out because the facts are just you know disassembling them dis- deconstructing them well there is a video a uh, clip that uh, super Mexican um, put together that shows uh, you know, what's going on in there with that uh, panel discussion including some high definition zoom ins of uh, Mark Lamont Hill's face and Mark Lamont Hill is so frustrated at the fact that uh, facts are beating up his talking points and that he's losing a debate hands down that he's crying on air and uh, the super Mexican does a great job of, of highlighting that in the video to point it out and it's a very humorous kind of video too with some added uh, subtitles as it were so go over to Buzzpo where we have the uh, the video linked uh, along with a discussion of what's going on there and uh, some some statements some further statements about uh, the what the actual laws of uh, land warfare are especially concerning the uh, storage of of items of war weapons of war in what are so-called protected sites uh, and according to the Geneva Convention what happens to those protected sites if they do so um, but go ahead and take a look at that and look at the video and uh, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on guys watching somebody who who just is getting their butt handed it to them in a debate because they have no facts to back their uh, rhetoric and just breaking down into tears live on television it's humorous I don't care who you are um, or which side that you support on the debate it's funny you know if you're gonna play with the big boy boys you know you gotta make sure you can wear your big boy pants and that you can you, you could take the you could take the shot in the arm as it were so uh, you can take those arm nuggies. Yeah, so the, the title of that post over at BuzzPo, and that's www.buzzpo, B-U-Z-Z-P-O dot com. And the title of the article is Aaron Alan Dershowitz Spanks Mark Lamont Hill Cues Paul Stanley. Oh no, tears are falling. I uh, can't sing like Paul Stanley. I'm Paul Berger Matushak, and I'm the host of the show. In case you haven't figured it out, we are coming up at the uh, last final moments of the show. So now is where I ask you to uh, call in tomorrow if you're so inclined. That's area code 520-226-8567. And I wish you a happy and great day and a, and a great rest of the week. And we'll be right back here tomorrow to uh, end the week out. And keep your eye on the news. And uh, keep your head about you and enjoy your day and get some good work done. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.